Hello and welcome to Dingo's Eight Mind Podcast. I'm Paul. I'm Dave. I'm Justin. And this week we're talking about the episode The Prom. Oh man, so much fun. So, mm-hmm. this episode originally aired May 11th, 1999. Hmm. So, in this episode, we start off at school where Anya asks Xander to the prom. Yes! yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm so happy. Later, Buffy, Willow, Oz, and Xander discuss prom plans and dresses. Buffy's mother, Joyce, visits Angel at the mansion and tells him that he cannot get in the way of Buffy's future and that he will have to do something about it. Mm. I'm sure this episode is going to just be super cheery. Mm. Of course. While patrolling, Buffy and Angel have an argument. Angel tells Buffy that it is unfair to her to be in a relationship with him because of all the things that he can't give her and breaks up with her. In a small house, someone plays a video for a caged beast that makes it go wild. Hmm... At a store where Cordelia secretly is working, Xander spots her through the window and goes in to tease her for what he thinks is her spending a long time trying to pick a dress. Mm. She reveals that she is working there to save up for a prom dress because her family lost all of their money. Because the, her father made a tiny little mistake on her on the tax returns for like only 12 years. Hmm. I don't think that's tiny. <laughs> Or whether or not that was technically a mistake in his father's case. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, The argument is cut short when a beast breaks through the window and kills a boy dressed in a tuxedo. Almost getting Xander, but oh man, that guy in the tuxedo. At the library, the gang studied the video of the attack attack, and identified Tucker Wells, who used to have a chemistry class with Oz. (gasps) Zoom in on that. VHS. <laughs> you can't do that. Quick, you need to pause it. Did I already say you... Oh, oh wait, we, no. can't, we can't do that. <laughs> uh, uh, Tucker has plans to ruin, ruin prom night by sending a hellhound to attack the students in formal wear because he was turned down for a prom date. He sounds well adjusted. Just a teeny bit, but I think for the most part, that's what your hellhounds look like? Really? Yeah, the ones in Supernatural look way better. So true. And despite the fact that costuming-wise it probably would look absolutely ridiculous, it would have helped if you gave them some sort of muzzle like an actual dog, give it kind of the actual hound sort of acronym to it. Yeah, they look like generic demons. Yeah. They look like goblins. Yeah, they kind of do, actually. Which works, but still. Ugh. Um, They didn't want to waste their budget on this one too much. True. Well, they actually did spend quite a bit of money on this, but we'll get to that later. Well, with the fancy uh, dresses and stuff, probably. Mm. Buffy vows not to let the Hellhound ruin their big night and issues orders for everyone to split up and search for clues. If she can't go to the prom, she's going to make sure everyone else has an awesome prom. As Cordelia leaves work, she finds that her prom dress has been paid for by Xander. (gasps) Oh my gosh. Buffy returns from her searching and orders everyone else to attend the prom while she takes care of Tucker. She finds him in his basement and ties him up before he can re- release the hellhound, but three more she did not know about were already on their way to the school. Ah, uh, shoot. Uh, after killing all of them, Buffy changes into a prom dress and shows up for the dance. Cordelia thanks Xander for paying for her prom dress and dances with Wesley, while Anya tells Xander of her past cursing unfaithful men as a vengeance demon. Super good stuff. <sighs> And Willow and Oz just enjoy the evening. When the class awards are given out, Buffy is given an ornately decorated parasol bearing a small engraving saying Buffy Summers, class protector. Angel surprises her by showing up in a tux and they dance as credits roll. Ah, everything turned out all happy yay bitch. Well, well, you still have that whole Mara sending thing. Oh, who cares about that? <laughs> hey. I mean, this is only prom. You can have your fun now and then have uh, Armageddon later or whatever happens. You gotta have some of the moments of levity before all things go to heck. So, international titles. In French and in German, it just translates as the Hellhounds or the Hellhound. Mm. It's uh, not about the Hellhounds. No, it's really not. No. Like, that's a minor plot, really. Yeah, Pretty it much. is. Uh, I love, okay, so in Portuguese and Latin American Spanish and, like, Spain Spanish, it all kind of has the same feeling. So it's the graduation dance, the dance of the end of course. What? The graduation dance. I think it's supposed to be, mean, like, the dance at the end of the semester, but it doesn't translate too well. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. maybe there's no word for it in that language. Maybe. 
And for music, uh, we have... This is where they spent quite a bit of money on this episode. Hmm. So, uh, Christoph Beck is doing the original score as usual. And for licensed music, <clears throat> we have Cracker, The Good Life, Fat Boy Slim, Praise You, Cool in the Gang, Celebration, Prince, 1999, Sister Sledge, We Are Family, The Lassie Foundation, El Rey, and The Sundays, Wild Horses. Had a bunch of music. Yeah. Well, I guess they kind of needed something to play at the prom for all the particular moments. Oh, yeah. Yes. So, you remember back uh, during Lover's Walk, we talked about them having a, um, a contest where you could win a role on Buffy? A bit, yes. Yeah, okay. Okay, so uh, Jessica Johnson, the winner of that sweepstakes, is in this episode. Okay. Did he wear she's, a tux? She's just in, in, she? oh. what, like, in one of the prom scenes. I don't okay. know who it is. Was it one of the people that got a photo with some of the students? It possibly, I don't know. Oh, okay. But anyway, yeah, that supposed award scene. It was awesome that that one character did it. Mm. So that's actually a problem if you watched it originally. Oh, yeah. Because the episode where she saves Jonathan hadn't mm. aired yet. Ah, uh, true. So that scene didn't have the same level of meaning in its original airing that it does uh... if you watch it on DVD. Mm. Yeah, okay, I can make that makes sense. Because, I mean, mm. without that one episode, you don't really get the sense of the Jonathan character. And it's like, okay, I remember seeing that guy. Why is it that he's announcing all these particular things? What's his importance aside from being that one guy that survived several different attacks? Yeah, I mean, I mean technically, Buffy had saved Jonathan before, mm-hmm. but it doesn't have the same emotional resonance if mm. you don't have the... Yeah, that but then makes of, sense. But then, of course, with me, the other emotional resonance... Really? A parasol? Just for the trophy? It's a trophy. Yeah, I don't really get that either. A shield sort of little trophy thing would have made just as much sense. Whether or not it was just a case of, oh shoot, trophies cost a decent amount of money and we can't get anything decent. Quick, we need to seek something different. Little uh, little parasol, some gold spray paint. Perfect! Okay, so a little trivia note. Uh, so Tucker Wells, uh, the guy who has the Hellhounds, he uses a couple of movies to indoctrinate them to attack people in formal wear. Oh yeah, I was what like, did he, uh, those he, movies oh, include okay. Carrie, yes, Prom Night, Nathan. Prom Night Four, Deliver Us from Evil, Pump Up the Volume, Pretty in Pink, and The Club. Yes, yes, all I those just things. Thought that was fun. That they're like you know. They're all prom movies. Well, of course. <laughs> I, question, I question, though, how you would make the Hellhounds hate it or any sort of thing like that. They're I'm demons. Exact, I'm not exactly sure on Being those forced against their will to watch it. Yeah, what? I mean, if you were forced against your will to watch, like, Pretty and Pink, you'd hate it. Hmm, possibly. Or I think it's just kind of a case of they see a happy sort of thing and they just want to bring a whole words of terror and misery to it. So, what did you guys think of this episode? It was fun. I'm glad, uh, glad Angel broke up with Buffy. That is a thing. That and also the Angel Nightmare definitely helped out with that situation. Yeah. With, oh man, it's not going to be good if I step to the light. I, I like how Buffy's the one that spontaneously combusts. It's like, oh no, all the things will go terribly wrong for Buffy because of our relationship. Oh god. <sighs> yes. So... Obviously, this is kind of... Okay, so there's a main major reason why they have to break Buffy and Angel apart. Because of the whole fact that they were going to make Angel and do another whole series. Yes, yeah. because they have two episodes remaining in the season now, and Angel has to be in fucking L.A. next year. None. So, we got to do that. Yes, put Buffy through the horrible torment of breaking up with her boyfriend that she really, really adores, and all the tears, and sadness, and the denial, and all the stuff, and the terribleness. See, most people I've read, or I've, I've read things on the internet say, like, the scene where Angel breaks up with her is the worst, and for me it's the scene with Willow. Oh, like, that is so Willow. much more affecting. Mm. Um, it's a fantastic scene. It's kind of a mix mm. of the two. I could definitely sort of understand with her not really understanding anything and just putting down it all like, yeah, I'm going to leave as soon as this is interesting is over and we supposedly win. But it also works for the bedroom scene because she breaks. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Alrighty, so do either of you have anything to add? Well, look forward to graduation day. So, our next two episodes are graduation day part one and two. Oh man, the two parters! Uh, so this will be the season finale. I'm going to give you just a quick synopsis of both parts. Well, not synopsis, but like... Yeah, a quick little tuck. Yeah, so for part one. While the mayor prepares for his ascension, Buffy battles Faith to save Angel's life, needing her slayer blood as an antidote. <gasps> and in part two, Buffy forces Angel to feed on her to save his life, and he must rush her to the hospital to save her. The mayor ascends, and the class of 99 have to deal with the mayor in his new form. Oh boy. Party like it's 1999? I had to like cut some stuff out because there's spoilers in the description. Okay. <laughs> Honky this. So, um, the next two episodes are going to be interesting uh, simply because one part had to be delayed a couple of months. One part? So part two had to be aired like they mean they a couple didn't... of months later. Really? They didn't air it back to back? What's nope. wrong with them? So Ooh. part one... Uh, May 18th, 99, and part two, July 13th. Oh, that's <laughs> silly. Two months. Jeez. Ooh. Again, because of Columbine. Mm. Oh, this again. Um, but what about the other episode? They delayed that till September. Yeah, I don't know. Be well, I think because that one is so clearly a student just bringing a rifle to school. It was yeah. more, like, you Dude. could make a direct comparison. Mm. Whereas this one, it's not as... They're, they're not going to have students with rifles. But don't worry, you can bring your hellhounds to school. <laughs> well, you can't summon a hellhound, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> I know, this is fantasy. Yeah, but they're going to have students with weapons in the second part. Okay, mm, got true, you. True, 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 true. <laughs> so, if there's nothing else to add, I'm Paul. I'm Dave. And I'm Justin. 